In the latest car crash TV interview for Labour politicians, Jonathan Ashworth went up against Andrew Neil over the issue of net zero. And it didn't go too well for the Labour politician. Now, I'm in two minds over this. Um, one is, Andrew Neil has been a bit difficult over the last few years. It hasn't been the same Andrew Neil that we knew of. He went a bit authoritarian over the lockdown days, and he's now got his own Channel 4 show, which nobody actually watches. Um, apart from me, I have to do it for my own work. But <laughs> apart from that, you have Jonathan Ashworth of the Labour Party, who decided to go on his show. I'm guessing he thought he's going to get an easy ride, because these days they might assume that... Uh, Andrew Neil has a bigger problem with the new right-wingers. Uh, but it didn't go too well for him because while we always talk about the Tory government's net zero agenda, which has been quite extreme, that's nothing compared to what could happen under Keir Starmer's Labour government if they get into power. And this is a perfect example of what you could see. Complete lunacy and, of course, incompetence. They don't even know how to do evil properly. One of these missions is to generate all of our electricity by 2030 with zero carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. That was one of the missions. Now, yesterday, at this time, 51% of all of our electricity needs were generated by gas. Over yep. half by gas. You seriously expect us to believe that you'll get that down to zero within five years? Well, that's it's impossible. Firstly, not only is it a bad idea, but it's not going to happen. Ambition. If you're going to be net zero, what will happen when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining? We can do Where so will the electricity come from? We can do so much more with renewables in this country, with wind, with solar. It doesn't matter how much wind you have if the wind isn't blowing. Yep. I'm baffled by how you think we can get to a net zero electricity system <laughs> by 2030 that won't involve gas. But we're going to be investing. What? In the industries of the future, we're going to be investing in renewables. We're going to be investing uh, uh, in tidal. No matter how much wind or solar you have, we will still need gas as a balancing item when the wind isn't blowing. What will you do? People can judge us after five years. We're talking about where we may be after the four or five years of a Labour government. You can't just wing it and tell the public, well, let, let's just judge. We don't know. I don't have the answers. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't even know about net zero that... I'm supposed to be passionate about as a Labour politician, as a Labour globalist politician. But let just trust us. Let's just do a bit of a gamble and judge us in five years' time. I'm pretty sure we've heard that line from a number of politicians. I'm just going to give you two examples. When you had Sadiq Khan saying when he became the mayor of London in 2016, he said, judge me on my, based on my press, uh, track, track record on uh, not having strikes in London, train strikes and all that. Well, we, we, we listened to him and we're now judging him. It's absolute chaos. Nicola Sturgeon said, judge me on my track record on education and schools. Now we're judging her because they're shutting down schools and cutting jobs. And the whole system is completely collapsing. And that's even, even when you're allowed to actually go to school and have critical thinking. And because they're not even allowed to teach proper education these days. It's all about leftist not nonsense. This is brilliant because it is giving us a preview of what we are going to be dealing with when these people like Jonathan Ashworth would go back on TV as Labour government ministers. Now, we are sick and tired of the Tory government and this cabinet has been completely all over the place over the last few years, especially after all the broken promises. But I am very afraid of what we could have under Keir Starmer and the Labour cabinet because there is no alternative. Clearly, there's no alternative right now, short term, and, you know, we could talk about, well, let's vote Reform UK. Let's vote for this. Let's vote for that. And sure, let's do it. Absolutely. Let's vote for a third party. But it's so quick. It's so short term right now. that it's virtually impossible to have any third party having enough manpower in their own party to be able to form a government. And I'm not just talking about candidates and MPs. I'm talking about everything around them. The parliamentary researchers, the, the special advisors. And people who have to be there to be their experts and do media work and everything else. And of course, the policy wonks. You need the policy brains to be there. So technically speaking, we're either going to end up with Team Blue or Team Red after the next election. I'm not saying it to be pessimistic. There is still time for the, the future elections. You have to start now to vote for third parties and smaller parties. But let's not have blind optimism that 
they, a, a random third party is going to win the election next time. But it, it could be hopeful for the future elections to wake up the Tories, to wake up the Labour Party, or to completely destroy them, wipe them out. All of them. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.